Hey guys, this is Chris from XK Tech Reviews, and today we're going to be talking about a topic that has garnered a lot of confusion and misinformation. M.2 drive and socket compatibility issue messiness. So, there's already a few good videos out there talking about M.2 drives and connectors and that sort of thing. A few that we found helpful were Jack from NCIX Tech Tips here, uh, JJ from Azus North America who talked about other forms of flash storage versus M.2 and that video was uh, very comprehensive. And then Paul from Paul's Hardware here which was probably the most helpful video that I watched about M.2 drives and that sort of thing. But something that really hasn't been super covered was M.2 drive and connector connectivity and compatibility. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, now, one of the main reasons why uh, M.2 drives have been so mysterious, or probably why they've been so mysterious, is because the uh, specification manufacturer, or whatever you call the people that make specifications, uh, PCI SIG, has not released the specification for the general public viewing. You have to pay a pretty hefty fee in order to read that specification. So um, we've had to rely on uh, manufacturer information and some like tech manuals and stuff like that to dig up the references that we found. If you'd like to do some fun M.2 drive reading, then look in the uh, references section of the description of this video below. So let's get started. So the first thing you'll want to check for when buying a new M.2 drive is the keying or the physical setup of the connector of both the drive and the socket on your motherboard or on your laptop or whatever it is that you're connecting your drive to. Now the most common connections for SSDs seem to be the M and the B connectors. And a lot of drives actually come with what is called a B plus M connection, where they will work in either a B or an M keyed motherboard socket. So as you can see from the chart here, there's a lot of different types of connectors, um, or rather keys for this connector, and there are a ton of different logical interfaces supported. And that brings us on to the next thing you want to look for when buying an M.2 drive. That's the logical interface. Now, the logical interface that you're probably most uh, used to, which was actually also a connector, is the SATA interface, which has used the same interface for a long time. The most recent iteration being the SATA 3 interface, which is capable of up to 6 gigabits per second transfer speeds, which translates to about 550 megabytes per second read speeds on solid state drives. And that's the cap that you're going to hit when you use a SATA M.2 connection. Um, but because of how slow that is comparatively with uh, solid state flash and such, the uh, drive manufacturers said, hey, how about we use PCI Express? And that's what they did. So you can, uh, of course, buy PCI Express expansion cards, or you can buy M.2 connectors which use a PCI Express bus on your computer. Uh, so when you're buying your M.2 drive, check to see if it is a SATA connection that you will be connecting it to or a PCI Express. There is some backwards compatibility on some drives and some motherboards, but you have to check all the documentation to see what's going to work with what. Finally, the last thing you'll want to check is if you're buying a PCI Express drive, look at what interface specification it uses. So back in, I believe, 2004, the AHCI, or Advanced Host Controller Interface, uh, interface specification was developed, and that was aimed towards uh, spinning platter media, so traditional hard disk drives. So it was really formatted for drives that weren't capable of fast read or write speeds. And that was fine up through the SATA 3 generation of solid state drives, but it really turned into a bottleneck with faster flash storage. So 
they came out with a newer uh, specification called the NVMe, which is actually easier to remember than its full name of the Non-Volatile Memory Host Controller Interface Specification. This was designed specifically with flash memory in mind. It's still a relatively new technology. It was first developed in 2011. So there's not a whole lot of support for it out there. You'll start seeing it on a lot of newer motherboards and laptops, but you'll really want to uh, check those details and make sure that the drive that you get, if you're getting a PCI Express, uses AHCI or NVMe or whatever matches the motherboard that you will be putting it into. So, what does that mean? Let's kind of draw up a conclusion here. If you're, drying it, if you're buying an M.2 drive, make sure that it is correctly keyed. Make sure that the logical interface matches PCIe or SATA. And if it is a PCIe drive, make sure that the interface, interface specification matches either the AHCI or the NVMe specification. So if you found this video helpful, click the little thumbs up like icon below. And if you really liked what we had to say, consider giving us a subscription. If you didn't like what we had to say, if you didn't like this video for whatever reason, including my hair, give us a dislike. Um, but if you do give us a dislike, promise me you'll leave us a comment below to tell us why you didn't like the video. Thanks for watching. My name is Chris, and this is XK Tech Reviews.